Hey, what's up, everybody? Dornell Dana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about the mind trash mortgage pros believe that gets stinking results. It's the stinking thinking that gets stinking results. And more importantly, how to think like a champion, how to show up in your business like a champion so you can get champion level results. Because let's get real. Everyone wants to get champion level results. But if you've got stinking thinking, if you've got chump level thinking, you're going to get chump level results instead of champion level results. And you got to be knowing that disconnect is a source of a lot of stress, strife, and struggle that frankly is unnecessary. It's unnecessary because once you get your thinking aligned, once you start to think like a champion, it's just a matter of time until you start getting champion level results. So let's unpack this because I'm on the phone with mortgage professionals on a consistent daily basis. And I've been doing this for 16 years. So it's not my first rodeo. And I see time and time again, well-meaning, well-intended, good-hearted, talented mortgage professionals who have all the talent in the world, all the potential in the world, and yet they fall short of their full potential because of the stinking thinking and mind trash that's clogging up their mental factory, causing them to, them to lose deals to their competition, to leave money on the table to their competition, to spin their wheels, to bang their head against the wall, to waste time, time they can never get back with fruitless toil, losing sleep, living in stress prison, regret prison. And ultimately, many people, at least 80% of mortgage professionals, as you may already be aware, get chewed up and spat out in the first two years. Those who manage to survive, they only make 75K. So it's important that we get maximum juice from the squeeze. You get as much profit producing nectar squeezed out of that thing called your business as possible. And if that is indeed your goal, then you've definitely showed up to the right place listening to this or watching this podcast. And it's important that you understand what this mind trash is and make sure that you don't have it taken factory. Otherwise, you're going to absolutely be leaving a shit ton of money on the table, doing it the hard way. And obviously, we don't want that to happen. So that's why we're doing this podcast episode. So let's get to it and do it, shall we? The first mind trash area that I want to shine light on today is closing more deals means I'm going to have to work more hours. Now, if you're starting from scratch, that, that may be the case. Like if you're starting from scratch from a standing start and you're only working 20 hours a week or 35 hours a week because you just don't know what else to do. Like you don't know how to bring in more business. You're basically waiting for the phone to ring versus making the phone ring because you just don't have the battle-tested proven plan. And you're just basically throwing yogurt at the fan, hoping something sticks without a compass, without a GPS, just meandering in the wilderness, unarmed and naked. And obviously, that can be rather foreboding. And that can very much be that internal tug of war that has you not taking action. I call it paralysis by analysis, right? Where it's like, should I do this or should I do that? Should I do Facebook ads? Should I do five posts a day on social media? Should I do Instagram ads? Should I do TikTok ads? Should I be doing billboards? Should I be doing magazine or newspaper ads? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Should I be going to open houses? Should I be cold calling realtors? There's like a million and one things you could be doing. The question is, what's the shortest path to the cash? And if you don't want to waste your time with fruitless toil, that can be rather overwhelming, right? Perhaps you can relate. It can be rather foreboding because it's like, man, where do I start? What do I do? And so again, that's a big reason why people hire us is because they don't want to be in the parking lot stuck in the emergency brake mode with you know first gear, half throttle, just kind of idling, going nowhere. They want to be on the fast track to making freedom money. And the question is, how do you do that? Well, again, that's why smart, growth-minded, uh, and ambitious mortgage professionals hire us is because that is not an easy code to crack, right? It's not an easy thing to figure out. You could, certainly can't figure that out by watching some free YouTube videos, listening to some free blogs, or rather reading some free blogs and uh, you know, listening to some free podcasts. That is not an easy thing to crack the code on because, of course, everyone's just selling the sizzle. They're not giving you the steak. We give our clients the stake once we have 100% certain we can help them, which is why we have a complimentary breakthrough call where we can shine the light of truth on their situation to see if there's someone we can actually help. And I'll 
talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But in the meantime, in between time, we want to make sure that you don't have the mind trash of thinking that going from where you are to where you want to be means that you have to be working 60, 70, 80, 100 hour weeks. You don't have to be working crazy hours to be making crazy money in this business. I have clients that close 10 deals a month, 15 deals a month, 20 deals a month, 30, 40, 50 plus deals a month who are working 40 hours or less a week. So it's not like you have to work crazy hours. It's not about how many hours you put in. It's about what you're getting from those hours. Obviously, we need to put policy, procedures, systems, protocol in place, people in place, technology in place so that you're not the chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats, doing everything yourself. Obviously, we need to put some systems in place so you have a business that sets you free as opposed to enslaves you. Otherwise, you just have a glorified J-O-B, which in my world stands for just over broke, right? Or journey on the way to brokenness. You don't want that to be you. You don't want a business that enslaves you. You want a business that sets you free. That's why you got in this business, true or not true. So the equation is not, oh, I want to make more money. I have to put in more hours. The equ equation is I need to work smarter as opposed to just harder. There's a difference, right? Because multiplying your income does not mean you have to multiply your workload. It doesn't mean that if you want to double your income, you have to double how many hours you work. That's not what it means. That's not the equation. That's doing it the hard way. What it means is if I want to double my income, I need to strategically double the number of quality applications I have in my funnel in my business. And I don't necessarily have to be doing all the minutia to take those from application to closing. I can have a loan officer assistant. I can have a loan partner. I can have a processor. There's different team members that can help you manage the minutia so you can focus on rainmaking instead of paper pushing. So you can do what you do best, get the best, do all the rest and really liberate yourself into dancing in your strengths, right? So you're focusing on what charges your battery versus what drains your battery, right? You got to be knowing there's things in your business that drain your battery just thinking about it, right? For me, it's administrative shit, like paper pushing, administration, data entry. That's like someone stick a gun to my head. That's just like gag reflex. That gives me a thumper just thinking about it. Something tells me a few of you can relate to that. So you got to find out what lights your fire for, you know, for most of you, what's going to light your fire the most is meeting with clients and cashing checks, right? For most of you, what's going to light your fire is, you know, meeting with partners, meeting with clients, uh, shaking hands and kissing babies. You know what I'm talking about? Like doing the stuff that's actually making it rain, beating the bushes for business, bringing in the business, doing all the minutia that has to do with all the loan level issues from application to closing, probably not your favorite thing to do right? True or not true. So if that's the case, we want to make sure that you have an equation that going from where you are to where you want to be is not more work. It's not about more work. It's about working smarter, not harder. It's about being more strategic about your work. So that's the first area that you want to check yourself on. Give yourself a checkup from the neck up. Have you been believing that making more money in this business means putting in more hours? If you've been believing that lie, it's time to kick that lie to the curb and embrace the truth that you can have it the way you want it if you don't settle, if you don't settle, which means how much money do you want to make and what kind of lifestyle do you want to live and how many hours a week do you want to work and how many days per week do you want to be working and do you want to have weekends off or do you want to work on the weekends? It's up to you. You're the captain of your own ship and your own destiny. You decide. There's people that work literally 25 hours a week and make millions in this business. So it doesn't mean that just because you want to make half a million a year, you have to work 80 hours a week. That's not the equation. Unless you're believing the BS lie that that's true. As Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. You decide. At the end of the day, you're going to prove yourself right. You are a self-fulfilling prophecy, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not. So choose your prophecy well. Choose a prophecy that uplifts you, that propels you into greatness, that sets you free as opposed to puts you in shackles. So that's the first mind trash I want to highlight. The second one is I need to be quote unquote realistic. Sound familiar? Like, you know, I need to be realistic. You know, I don't want to set my you know goals too high. I need to be realistic. You know, I was thinking maybe 
you know, I'll set a goal of maybe doing hundred K this year. Cause I need to be realistic or maybe I'm just going to add an extra 50 K this year in income. Cause I need to be realistic. I need to be reasonable. Look, the fastest, surest pathway to being mediocre is to be quote unquote, me realistic or reasonable. If you want to live a mediocre life, then be realistic. If you want to have a magical life, an adventurous life, an off the chain, awesome life, then you've got to step outside the prison of your own making called being realistic. Now, that doesn't mean that there's some laws of incubation. There's some laws of gestation that we need to abide by. You know, if you plant corn in the sowing season, it doesn't mean you're going to get corn in a week, right? There's a gestation period of probably a couple months. If you're going to have a baby, you know, we need nine months. You're, it's not going to be healthy for the baby if you expect the baby to come out in six months or in five months. That baby is not going to be very happy with you because it's not meant to, you know, come out of the womb that fast. We need some time to uh, get that baby some fat on its limbs, get all the systems you know, the immune system, the nervous system, the suck on mommy's nipple system, all those systems need to be put in place. Otherwise, the baby's not going to survive. So there is a gestation period. So I'm not saying that we're shirking the laws of nature and the laws of cause and effect and gestation. What I am saying is, while you are abiding by those laws of gestation, you're Stepping into a purpose that inspires you. You're stepping into a vision that gets you doing backflips, gets you doing the happy dance, just thinking about it. You're smiling ear to ear, just thinking about it. It fires you up. It inspires the shit out of you because it's a magical, what I like to call big, hairy, audacious dream, right? So it's not just an itty bitty little inc incremental improvement. It's like, man, it's a vision that fires you up. It puts sparkle in your eye. It puts pep in your step. Chances are that's not just an itty bitty little improvement in your business. Chances are that's an avalanche of awesome, right? Chances are that's doubling, tripling, quadrupling, even quintupling your income while working the same or less hours. And let's get real. When you have a magical, big, hairy, audacious dream that fires you up, that inspires you, that's going to call out the best in you. That's going to get you to get up early, stay late. It's going to get you to dig deep. It's going to get you to be resourceful. It's going to get you to do the things that most people aren't willing to do today so you can get the results most people aren't going to get tomorrow, right? So it's going to get you really stepping into your champion self because you got a champion level dream, not a chump level dream, a champion level dream. And so being realistic is a great way to have a chump level dream. Don't let your dreams be realistic. Let them be freaking off the chain crazy where it takes God to make it happen. A God-sized dream, right? That it requires you to abide in faith. That it requires you to dig deep. That it requires you to grow your leadership, to grow your character, to grow your faith muscle, to take massive action in spite of your fear, to feel the fear and to do it anyway. It should scare you and excite you at the same time. And so... If it scares you and excites you at the same time, if it's a God-sized dream that requires your faithfulness, your persistence and consistency and your resiliency with God's help, that's a God-sized dream. And that's going to call out some God-sized resourcefulness. That's going to call out some God-sized faith. And you're going to have a magical life when you see that to pass. When you, take, when you see that dream, that seed of your dream, take root and bear fruit, over time and you make that dream real, now you've got a magical life, not a boring ass life because you chose a boring ass dream. Does that make sense, guys? So that's mind trash number two you want to steer clear of. Let's talk about the third one. I don't want to be greedy. Perhaps you've heard people say that, right? Like, you know, I don't need to make that, you know, 150K that I don't want to be greedy, right? I don't need to make half a million. I don't need to make a million. I don't want to be greedy. It's almost as if like having a big, hairy, audacious dream that is lavish, that's extraordinary, that's like absolutely in excess from a standpoint of what you need to live day to day is something you should feel guilty about or shameful about. Like that's going to put you in the greedy category. Who says? Who says? Well, the truth is you say. And if that's your truth, that's cool. But is that truth serving you to your dream? Is that truth serving you to a magical life? Is that truth 
having you step into the best version of yourself? Chances are not. Because if you think that making more money than you need is greedy, then you're going to play small and play safe. Here's the real truth. The best way to help the poor is not be one of them. Here's the real truth. If you're going to work, you might as well get freaking rich. Here's the real truth that the best way to bless others is to earn more than you need. So you are blessed to be a blessing. So what if you doubled, tripled, quadrupled, quintupled your income and you made a two times more, three times more, five times more than you need to live and you can invest some and you can you know, do some crazy vacations, first class, five star, and you can help some family members. You can help some friends. You can, you know, invest in a nonprofit. You can, you know, sponsor some kids. You know, I've got my brokerage that's licensed currently in Texas, South Carolina and Florida, Best Life Mortgage with two awesome partners that I roll with in the company. We give away 10% of our profits to liberate kids from the shackles of human trafficking, to give them a new life, new hope, new dignity, a new future, a new destiny. I get fired up every time I think about it and talk about it. To me, to change a life like that, to pull them out of that dark pit of despair where inconscionable sufferings and inconscionable things are being done to them by evil, dark-hearted predators on a daily basis and to pull them out of that darkness to pull them out of that pit of hell and to give them a new hope, new future, new dignity, new life, new education, and to restore their soul and to restore the, their identity as someone who's beloved by God and is, has value and worth and to give them a new future. That fires me up every time I think about it, every time I have the gift and the joy of being able to liberate just one of those kids. It brings me virtually to tears of joy every time. That never gets old. And the best way to help the poor is not be one of them. So it's not about being greedy. It's not about just coming to get. It's coming to give. Have a purpose that's about making a difference in the world, not just about accumulation, not just about getting the fancy cars and the big house. Nothing wrong with any of that, by the way. It's perfectly cool. If you're out there serving more people, helping more people, bringing value to more people, then you deserve to live a magical life. You deserve that, you know, sexy whip. If you got if you're a car person, you might be all about having a, you know, a wicked ride. Maybe you're about having a cabin in the mountains on a lake with your own private dock with a boat, you know, a surf boat or something like that. Maybe you're about helping your community and educating your community on how to stand on their own two feet with fiscal intelligence and fiscal literacy and to be able to really educate them and illuminate them into having generational wealth and to be able to serve people to next level financial freedom. Whatever it is for you, it's not about being greedy. You can have it all. You can have the fancy car. You can have the fancy house if that's important to you. You can have the five-star, you know, first-class adventures around the world. If that's your thing, then knock yourself out and you can help a lot of people. You can serve a lot of people. You can make an impact in the world at a epic level. So it's not about one or the other, friends. I don't want you to think about it like it's mutually exclusive. You can have both. You can have both. Why not have both? Like I said before, if you're going to work, you might as well get freaking rich. That's what I'm saying. So free yourself from the mind trash that having more money, making have a, being rich, being affluent, being, being wealthy is being greedy. No, that's called stinking thinking. That's called mind trash that will steal the glory of your potential. It'll steal the glory of what you're capable of. It'll steal the glory of the magical life that no doubt you and your family would love to live if you can pull out the shame and the guilt and just embrace it and receive it, knowing you're being positioned through that blessing to be a blessing to others. You're blessed to be a blessing, not to just increase your standard of living, but to increase your standard of giving. And to know that now, because you have more than enough, you can be a constant conduit of contribution, a constant conduit of contribution. Isn't that a beautiful thing to even consider and behold in your mind? 
to just be like a bubbling brook, just building over with overflow, with abundance, to be a generous giver, but also to be a generous receiver and to enjoy, you know? It's like Ziegler, Ziegler, he said, money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. And if you'll embrace the idea of you being wealthy, you being abundant, what happens is now there's a circuitry, there's a circulation of that money where you're not hoarding it, you're not feeling like it's a scarce commodity, but you're a constant conduit of contribution, circulation, where you can impact people's lives even in your absence because money is just simply energy. And money doesn't make you more righteous or less righteous. There are unrighteous rich and there are righteous rich. There are unrighteous poor and there are righteous poor. Money just magnifies who you already are. If you're a stingy, greedy person, then money will just make you more stingy and more greedy. If you are a giving, loving, generous person, money will make you more giving, more generous, more loving. So it just simply magnifies who you already are. So embrace the fact that money is just going to allow you to magnify those virtuous traits you already have to make a bigger difference in the world. That'll allow you to receive and to give at a higher level. The fourth area of mind trash I want to highlight is I don't want to rely on realtors. Have you heard that before? Perhaps you can relate intimately. You're like, man, these realtors are a pain in the butt. They're prima donnas. They're flaky. They think their poop doesn't stink. They're just annoying. I'd really love, love, love to have a business where I didn't have to mess with realtors. Perhaps that's been your mantra. Perhaps that's been your way of thinking. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a business that doesn't rely on realtors. I'm not saying you have to work with realtors. And I'm certainly not saying that you know, you're stupid or you're doing it wrong if you're going to build your business that way. Some people, that's just what they choose to do. And that's perfectly cool. You know, whatever tickles your fancy. But where it becomes mind trash is when you presuppose and prejudge erroneously that all realtors suck, that all realtors are prima donnas, that all realtors are drama queens, that all realtors are a pain in the ass to work with. That's just not true. Any more true than saying that, you know, Latinos are a pain in the butt or black people are a pain in the butt or white people are a pain in the butt. Listen, human beings come in all different colors and all different flavors and all different spectrum of personality. Not everyone's going to be the right fit for you, right? So it's not about putting them all in one category and throwing the baby out with the bathwater and saying all realtors suck. No. If they suck, it's probably because you suck at adding unique value. It's like what I often say, if you don't like sex, you're probably doing it wrong. It's not that sex is the problem. It's that your method probably is the, needs to be upgraded. So it's not that realtors are the problem. It's that your method of approaching realtors needs to be upgraded. Chances are, if you don't like working with realtors, it's because you're doing it the hard way. You don't have a value proposition or your value proposition is weak or lackluster. You have the wrong approach in terms of how you're booking the appointments uh, maybe you're doing caveman methods from the dark ages, cold calling. That's definitely doing it the hard way. Or maybe you're just showing up to the meetings and you're just showing up and throwing up with a data dump talking about how great you are. I'm the, you know, I'm going to provide great rates, great service, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Who cares? That's what everyone says. Great rates and great service is a minimum expectation just to get in the game in this business, friends. That's far from a compelling, unique value proposition. And if you don't know, know that to be true, you have probably haven't started your business yet because if you've been in this business for more than a day and you've reached out to realtors more than 10 times, you know that realtors, they're going to slip into a coma the very moment you start talking about great rates and great service. They don't give one rat's ass, one iota about any of that. What they care about is what are you going to do to help them grow their business? What are you going to do to help them close more deals with less effort? What are you going to help them do to push the needle on profit and performance? What are you going to help them do to generate more buyers and sellers? If you don't have wicked effective systems for doing that, and if you don't have a compelling overture with the words that work that are easy to say yes, the easy yes value proposition, 
then you're going to get a high wall of resignation, resignation, cynicism, skepticism. They're not going to give you the time of day. You're going to get a lot of rejection. They're going to basically just ghost you. And they're going to give you lame ass excuses like I've already got a lender. I already work with a lender. That's the go-to. Sound familiar? I already have a lender. Well, the reason why they say that is because it's a go-to to shake you off. It's like there's a flea on their shoulder. They want to flick off the flea. That's their go-to. I already have a lender. They don't want an, another annoying pest. You've got to position yourself as a welcome guest instead of an annoying pest. How do you do that? You need to have the right value proposition and you need to be able to deliver on that value proposition. And that's a big reason why smart growth minded uh, mortgage professionals hire us at mortgagemarketingcoach.com is to learn that secret sauce. Because like I said before, that is not an easy code to crack, right? It's not something you can just Google and find that out, right? You can be in this business for 10, 20 years and never figure it out. So that's precisely why we've been in business for 16 years and why we have literally dozens and dozens of zero to hero, dud to stud success stories and testimonials, because that's all we've been focusing on for 16 years. I mean, we'd have to be complete numb nuts not to figure it out and not to have the secrets revealed after all that time. You know, eventually you focus on something long enough, the secrets will be revealed. And that's certainly been the case for us. And that's why people hire us. They don't have to mess around trying to figure that stuff out on their own. But the mind trash, again, I want to highlight is don't believe the stinking thinking that you may have been thinking that all realtors are bad or all realtors are drama queens or prima donnas. That's just not true. And don't believe the stinking thinking that going after the bottom feeders is easier or better than going after the top dogs. I'm here to tell you that the top dogs are just as easy to attract if you have the right value proposition. If you have an attractive value proposition that pushes the right buttons so that you got the right bait. Because if you want to attract a particular critter, you need to have the right bait to attract that critter, right? If you're using the wrong bait, don't be surprised if you come up with mud sharks instead of salmon, if you're using the wrong bait. And the same thing goes here. So that being said, that's mind trash number four. Let's get into the last one I want to highlight today. And that is my market is different. My market is different. Perhaps you can relate. You're like, yeah, my market's different. I work with Latinos. You know, they're all about the lowest price or I work with uh, Vietnamese. They work, they're all about the lowest price or you know, I work with Polish people or I work with, you know, Ukrainian people or I work with Russian people or whatever the case is. I work with, you know, the tech industry. Uh, I'm in, uh, you know, Silicon Valley. These people, my market's different. Sure, there might be some nuances to your market, but everyone has a pulse. Everyone fogs a mirror. Everyone's human. Everyone puts their pants on the same way, one leg at a time. Everyone is trying to get out of pain and into pleasure. Everyone's trying to work smarter, not harder. Everyone wants to get out of their problem and into their solution. And in this particular case, everyone, when it comes to borrowers, everyone's looking for a way to get a mortgage to buy a house if indeed they're planning on buying a house. If they're wanting to buy a house, then they need a mortgage unless they have enough cash to buy it cash. But obviously, very low percentage of people have that kind of money, especially with this crazy seller's market. So, the rules of psychology are the same regardless. It doesn't matter what your market is. And the cool thing is, if you have the secret sauce to build a stable of top producing realtors who make you their exclusive, who send you, who send you one, two, three deals a month, you don't need many of those to push the needle on profit and performance at a pretty dang high level. Like chances are, if you had five to 10 top producers sending you one, two, three deals a month, you're making three hundred dollars to $700,000 plus per year just from that alone not including everything you already have going on if you already have a book of business. So it doesn't take many of those. You know what that is? That's like 15 to 25 well-orchestrated, well-executed meetings using our secret sauce method. We're not talking backflips here. It's, this is not rocket science. But again, if you don't know the formula, you could, be, you could do meetings till you're blue in the face and never crack the code on this, never thread the needle on this. But your, your market is not that different than anyone else's market. Everyone's in a seller's market. Everyone's basically got, you know, offering great rates and great service. So what's going to differentiate you is not in you making the excuse that your market is different. Because if that is what you're thinking, I'm here to tell you that's mind trash that will take you out of the game. 
Because if you think your market's different, you're always going to be coming up with nuances and distinctions and loopholes that has you not taking action, that has you, you know, pushing back and say, yeah, but. Yeah, that might work for you. Yeah, but my market's different. Yeah, that might work for you. Yeah, but my market's different. Well, that's a great way, by the way, to spin your wheels and bang your head against the wall and get stuck in a rut of stagnation because instead of doing what champions do, which is asking a more intelligent question, so instead of saying, yeah, but, and powering down, they say, okay, game on. How can I use this in my market? How can I apply this in my market? Now you're shifting from thinking like a chump to thinking like a champ. Now you're thinking from a power down perspective to a power up perspective. Now you're going to tap into your innate, innate resources, gifts, talents, abilities, genius, and you're going to come up, come, you're going to find a way to apply the principle to your market. So instead of it being a yeah, but it's a game on. Instead of a power down, it's a power up. So the mind trash there that I want to highlight is your market is really not that different. You still have realtors who need your help, who have clients who need your help. You still are in a market where people are getting into the market. They're moving up in the market. They're getting married and they're dying. And all those require transactions. And all those are tied to specific referral partners. Your market is not different. Your market is the same as any other market from those principles. Will there be nuances to your approach in how you speak with a top producing realtor versus a bottom feeder or a newbie? Absolutely. But frankly, I don't even recommend talking with bottom feeders and newbies. Let's just go straight to working with the top dogs that have the most business, the most influence, the most clout, the biggest database, and the most amount of business to send you. I mean, let's not step over dollars to pick up dimes. Let's focus on what's going to take you shortest path to the cash, which is and always will be attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive and have them put you on their speed dial and mining the gold from your database, maximizing repeat and referral business if indeed you have a database. That's the shortest path to the cash. So your business is not any different. But if you believe that that's the case, you're right. As Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. If you believe your market's different, then it is. And guess what? then you're right. And then you just get to be a victim of circumstance and you get to be stuck doing it the hard way instead of stepping into doing it the smart way. I'm here to invite you to consider it's a lot more fruitful, a lot more fun, and a lot more fulfilling to do it the smart way. So if you're listening to this or watching this right now and you're like, Dorn, you got some good points. I've been maybe perhaps a little lazy in my thinking You've shined some light in the darkness. You've shined some light on some uh, of the areas I never really considered before that are in my blind spot that has me realize that, yeah, I've had some stinking thinking, some mind trash that's been holding me back. I didn't realize that I've been holding myself back unwittingly and unnecessarily until you highlighted them. Well, you're welcome. That's the job of a champion level coach is to shine the light on those blind spots, because when you're inside the bottle, it's hard to see the label. That's the power of having a elite level coach in your corner. So if you are a growth minded, ambitious, residential, 100% commission mortgage professional, and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of spinning your wheels, you're sick and tired of being stopped by the realm called you don't know what you don't know. You're sick and tired of paying hundreds of thousands of dollars unnecessarily to the tuition of the university of not knowing, not knowing how to attract these top producing realtors, not knowing how to craft a killer kick-ass unique value proposition, not knowing how to mine the gold from your database, not knowing how to shine online with five-star reviews so you leave your competition in the dust and dominate on Google, not knowing how to leverage social media to optimize your leads, your apps, and your closings, not knowing how to systematize and automate the process so the business sets you free as opposed to enslaves you. If you don't know how to do that, you're paying to the tuition of the university of not knowing every single day, every single month to the tune of literally tens of thousands of dollars every month, leaving that money on the table to your competitors. If you're sick and tired of banging your head against the wall, spinning your wheels, and 
not even getting close to your full potential and you're sick and tired of living in I can't afford a prison or frustration prison, stress prison, you're ready, ready to step into making freedom money for your family. You're ready to start working smarter, not just harder. You're ready to take the shortest path to the cash to double, triple, quadruple your income while working less hours. Then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where you'll get on the phone with either myself or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, uh, where you're at now, where you want to take your business. And if we can help you bridge that gap and create a breakthrough, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, friends, our goal for you is that you would leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. Unless you're a real boring ass, then we won't. No, just kidding. That being said, though, you got to be knowing we like to have fun. So strap on your seatbelt, seats in the upright position. It's go time. If you're ready to create a breakthrough, this is your opportunity to shine light, the line of truth on your situation and get clarity like you've never had before on what it's really going to take to step into your greatness, to step into your dream and to start making freedom money like never before. So if you're game for that, because you understand nothing ventured, nothing gained, go ahead and book a call. It's a free call. It's complimentary, no strings attached. This is not a sales call. This is a shine the light of truth on your situation call. So it's an honest conversation to see and identify where you're at, where you want to go, and if we can help you. If we discern and decide that we're 100% certain we can help you, then we'll make you an offer. If not, frankly, nothing ventured, nothing gained. We'll bless you and release you and part as friends telling you we can't help you perhaps recommend another resource another tool uh, something else that might be better suited for you so you'll leave the call with value regardless but this is not a sales call because if we have to sell you on you making freedom money frankly you're not ready to make freedom money just saying so if you're game for that book a call mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply my name is Doran Aldana. I've been coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We just talked about the mind trash that mortgage professionals believe that has them getting stinking results, leaving a shit ton of money on the table. And we just gave you the contrast, the juxtaposition on how champions think, how top producers think, and the vis visualization of a champion is the first step you know, the best way to identify a counterfeit is to understand what a real dollar bill looks like. Once you understand what that real deal looks like, you understand how to identify the counterfeit. You understand what the lie is or how to identify the lie once you arrive at what the truth looks like. So I hope that I've given you some tough love today that's rattled some cages, that stirred you up a little bit. I hope that I've you know, kicked you in the proverbial nuts or ovaries with a little tough love to get you realizing that Coach D doesn't pull any punches. I'm calling it tight. And you got to be knowing I ain't done. I've just begun. So stay tuned for the next episode because I'm going to keep coming at you with more badass, hard hitting knowledge bombs that are going to help you take your business and your life to the next level because that's how we roll here on Planet Prosper. Be blessed and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.